as you would have seen over the past three weeks, protesters from climate change activist group Insulate Britain have caused huge disruption by blocking major roads in and around London. And whilst many support their message, it's led to a lot of anger from the public. Well, Insulate Britain, who are calling on the government to insulate all UK homes by 2030 to cut carbon emissions, have profoundly apologised for the disruption, but have defended its tactics, saying direct action is effective and leads to policy change. But the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, outlined plans to clamp down on such protests and Transport for London has won an injunction to prevent more disruption on the streets of the capital. In the same week, the Pope and 40 other faith leaders have called on governments to take more action against climate change, saying we have inherited a garden. We must not leave a desert to our children. So we are asking, should we support disruptive action on climate change? And if not, what are the alternatives? Well, joining us to discuss the issues are the head of Witness and Worship for Quakers in Britain, Oliver Robinson, and Satya Robin, writer, teacher and member of Extinction Rebellion Buddhists. Uh, we also have political commentator Jason Reid and Carl Brettel, co-founder of the Climate Trust. Welcome to you all. Uh, Satya, uh, you've been involved and you've also been arrested at similar protests uh, to the ones we've seen this week. Now, a recent uh, Gov, uh, YouGov survey suggested that support from the public of these protests might be quite low, as low as 25%. And so when you think of that, this sort of action doesn't seem very popular. Actually, you, maybe you're alienating the people you should be getting on side. That's fair to say, isn't it? Thank you, uh, very accurate. Martin Luther King was hugely unpopular in his lifetime. And um, my opinion is that we, we often confuse popularity with effectiveness. Uh, I want to talk about love as much as I can today. And I believe that um, people who take part in these kinds of protests are motivated by love um, because they believe that it is the best chance we have of saving um, humanity, and that sounds dramatic, I know, but yeah. it's the truth. Well, well absolutely, you're, you're, you know, obviously that's your, your opinion, which is great. And Jason, let me bring you in, because there's no denying we're in a climate crisis that needs urgent action, and time, quite literally, is running out. So can you understand why protesters feel that they have no choice but to take headline-grabbing action like this? We are in a climate crisis and we do need urgent environmental action, but this kind of disruptive action that we're seeing from Insulate Britain and from Extinction Rebellion is a very slippery slope in my eyes. If the government gave Extinct uh, Insulate Britain what they wanted, if they gave in to their demands, it would just send a message to everyone else that the way to participate in our democracy, the way to contribute is to take disruptive action to disrupt other people's lives rather than contributing in a meaningful way to the policy debate or the discourse, I think it's, it's poisonous, both on an immediate level to the environmental policy debate, because it stops the conversation stone dead, and on a wider level to the culture of our discourse and our democracy. Everyone has their opinions and everyone has their policies that if they think, if they were implemented, would save a lot of lives. That's why they are your opinions. The difference with a group like Insulate Britain is that they've come along and stamped their foot down and said, no, we're right and everyone else is wrong, and we're going to now disrupt your lives until you give in and concede that we're right. It stops the conversation yeah. stone dead, and it's the opposite of what we should be doing. Yeah, I, I mean, Oliver, they are good points, aren't they? Slippery slope, uh, yeah. it's, it's poison. Uh, I mean, giving, being seen to be giving in to this sort of protest will encourage other protesters, uh, which, which just isn't a good thing. I mean, why is that protest more important than another? And then the other thing that I really noticed is that we're seeing a lot of faith leaders being involved in this. You're, you're a Quaker. Can you justify mm. faiths getting involved in illegal action? So, I mean, Quakers have been around for about 370 years and we've been protesting against injustice more or less since the start. And I think that's because protest is one of the ways that we do put faith into action. You know, and it happens when people speak out because God, the Spirit, a conscience, call it what you will, tells us that we cannot stay silent on injustice in the world. And one of the 
short Quaker phrases that we have as sort of guides to live by our advices and queries says, um, respect the laws of the state, but let your first loyalty be to God's purposes. And for some Quakers, that involves nonviolent direct action. And so this isn't just a matter of political effectiveness or ways of engaging in public debate. It's also a matter of religious freedom and belief. But yeah. can, can, can I just stop you there? Because a lot, lot of people will say, oh, well, my God told me to do this, so I'm going to do it. Uh, and it's fine for you to say, well, you know, as a Quaker, your God says this. But other people say, my God told me something. Where, where do you draw the line? So I think one of the key places that you draw the line is around harm to other people. So what was said about love being important, I think, is really, is really valuable. One of the things Quakers are most known for is peace. And actually, that's because we see that all people are children of God. Everybody has worth. And therefore, we should be trying not to do harm to people. Now, I think that disruption often does not meet that threshold. And I think that there is a slope, but there is also a clear line on it. And the line comes when it moves from disrupting people to actually hurting, harming, injuring them. Yeah. And that if you're, on the, if you're on the disruptive only side of it, then actually protest shouldn't be restricted. It should be enabled. It's one of the ways for people without power, without access to yeah. wealth or connections yeah. to be able to have their voices heard in that, public that's, that's great because, I, I, Carl, I'd like to bring you in here because um, very valid points being made all, all round. But direct action has been hugely influential in the past. Let's think about the suffragettes. Um, you know, Sasha talked about, you know, Martin Luther King. So surely if the cause is righteous enough, it can change things today. Couldn't insulate Britain be regarded as an important thing of the future, maybe as important as Gandhi, for instance? Yeah, I think if we take the suffrage movement as an example, uh, what we had there was the government not doing anything about the issue. Uh, that's why the movement rose up in the beginning. It's not like the UK um, is without any kind of activity on climate, but we, we need to take a more positive, proactive uh, stance. So. Oh. We've only set up uh, a few weeks ago, and it was because my son, eight-year-old Reuben, said, Daddy, what are we doing about the climate? And being a good Christian, uh, I wanted to do something. So we believe the things about where you buy things from. So I, I was in the supermarket yesterday. Uh, there were blueberries for sale from South Africa. Why would I buy blueberries flown 8,000 miles across the world. Yeah. Um, we then think about where do we go? So could we stay a bit more local, use a car less, ride a bike more? But the main thing is, and this is a message to the blockaders, why don't you put your energy and your effort, your positivity into something like planting trees to take carbon out of the atmosphere, produce oxygen? Yeah. So so what, what should we do then? I mean, you know, we're recycle, you know, waste less, live greener lives. There are lots of people out there who don't want to glue themselves to the M25. What can you do if you want to protest and make a difference? Because actually, maybe the government aren't listening if you're nice with it. And that's the whole point that people are gluing themselves to motorways. Yeah, I think the, the whole thing with climate is such a huge subject that the average person doesn't really know how to, how to do something beyond the mandatory recycling collection. So trying to go out with a message of, you know, if you planted 761 trees by our calculation, you would offset your entire lifetime carbon. Mm -hmm. So doing the simple things, making sure day by day, week by week, month by month, we are doing something constructive and positive and not just disrupting everyone's lives. Yeah. Satya, um... So we know the Home Secretary, Priti Patel, has said she wants to introduce uh, a new criminal disruption protection order. So it's basically like an ASBO to stop, uh, prevent activists travelling to protest sites. Would, would that stop you? Because, you know, you've been involved in these sorts of protests before, haven't you? I want to be really clear about the situation that we're in. Um, $11 million a minute is being invested into oil and fuel subsidies. And the UN said that if we exceed 1.5, it would be catastrophic. The world's own targets at the moment put us at 2.9 degrees Celsius. And I get emotional when I talk about this because I'm frightened for my nieces who are eight and 10. I'm lucky to not have children. I won't be handing this world to them. 
Um, we've been trying for 30 years to do uh, the planting of the trees and the, the, the speaking up in the ways we can. It's not working. Satya. The world is the world is in cardiac arrest and yeah. we need to do CPR. We, we, we and get sometimes that. that. And sometimes that, that causes some harm. And I really regret that. And you, but so I don't believe we have any other hope. So you would continue illegal action because you, you think that the, the, the consequences the other way are so grave, it, it needs Sean, to be done. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't uh, continue with the action that I'm taking. The non-violent direct action and non-violence is so key. And it is really, really scary to do non-violent direct action. I do not want to be taking my holiday and, and, and ending up in a police cell. That is not what, what my friends want to do. We can uh, really we, see we, how... We don't, we don't feel that, that anything else is working. And in his History, as as you said, Jackie, um, there are there are very documented. Um, his, we, we'll look back at history and we'll yeah. see. Absolutely, let's see, I let's mean, see how this turns out. We can see how passionate you, you know you are about this, um, Satya. But Jason, these protests are symptomatic of a general disillusionment with the political solutions. Actually, I mean, Greta Thunberg has always, and and she always does, she criticise politicians for empty words. You know, it's too much blah 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 and not enough action. Can we really rely just on politics to save the planet? Well, I agree with some of what Satya said, especially about fossil fuel subsidies. There's a lot more that we should and could be doing, and that's a really, really important issue. But disruptive action is not the only way to do that. The justification that's always wheeled out um, is that we had no other choice, no one was listening, but that's just not the case. You look to countless other examples where awareness has been raised and money has been raised, like, for example, the ALS um, ice bucket challenge. I think that's a really good example of something that was positive and forward-looking to raise money and awareness for uh, motor neuron disease and money for research yeah. into that. The difference, of course, is that in that case, uh, the cause is universal. It's something we yeah. can all get behind and we can all say it's completely worthwhile. Whereas okay, with Jay Interlake Britain and a... Sorry. Yeah, Jason, yeah, I'm afraid we're, we're running out of time, but we did actually, we did really get your point. And actually, I did hear you say you sort of agree with Satya. Agreement right. on the show. That's fantastic. Wow. Yeah. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll seize on that little bit of agreement. Thank, Thank you, you very all very much. much. Thank indeed. you. Thank you.